the Sussex study started in 1968. It was started by Dick Potts, who many of us know as being the world authority in gray partridges. And it was started to look at the life cycle of gray partridges and find out why their numbers were declining. And so he started off following around gray partridges and counting them, looking at chicks, looking at how they were produced, how many came through every year. And he realized very quickly that he needed to look at insects. And so in 1970, he, he and his team started doing insect sampling in the cereal crop because that's where the mother and father gray partridge, the, the adults, take their young to feed on insects. Well, I joined the trust in 81 and I came down to Fording Bridge and started sampling on the Sussex area in 83. So I've been sampling here every year since then. So I go out in the field during the summer and collect a lot of insect samples and then during the winter I spend my time identifying and counting the different species and groups in the samples and then we can relate that pack to what's in the different habitat and the different environmental options the farmers have done to see how well they're doing. So overall there's a 37% decline in numbers, overall numbers, over that time, so over 50 years. And most of that decline happened in the 1970s and the 1980s. And since then, there's been a bit of bobbling along, but most of the decline happened early on. Unfortunately for gray partridges and other farmland birds, a lot of the chick food items, the items that those chicks like to eat, those are the groups that have declined the most. So aphids are down by around 90% since 1970. We've also got declines in sawfly larvae, which are another thing that's quite, you know, most gray partridge chicks would love to find a nice big juicy sawfly larva. The other things that um, invertebrates do is they do pollination. Although most of our cereal crops are wind pollinated, they don't need to be pollinated by insects. But perhaps most importantly in our cereal crops, they serve as another means of pest control. And in fact, if you've got good numbers of, uh, of these predators, you can usually rely on them to do a lot of your pest control instead of going for a chemical. 70% of our, our country, of Britain, is farmed. Now, not all of that is arable, but we need to keep monitoring what's going on. And it's not just us monitoring the insects. We also talk to the farmers. We get information on how they're managing their crops. We uh, record information on their rotations. I look at their arable flora. They might call those weeds. Um, all of this kind of farmland ecosystem, we keep, need to keep an eye on what's happening so that we're not just, you know, think what we know is going on. We actually need to test and see what is going on. We, we sample a lot of environmental options that farms put on and the insects in those and see how good they are for the farming wildlife. And then we can report back and some of them are good, some need tweaking and some probably need to be got rid of. But it's quite important to monitor these different strips and things because they vary a lot too. You know, you can put a strip in in one place and it's very different from a strip in another place. They've got to be managed right and put in right. We're also looking at the GWCT advanced partridge mix, which is proving to be a very good mix to put into different areas to give insect food for the chicks and other arable birds during the summer, but also winter seed and winter cover. You know, farmers let us come on their land, take samples, to do what we want generally, and they're very happy. We report back and give them ad advice and tell them what we found. I mean, with modern farming, they have to use chemicals to get the yields that the public need for their food, which makes it even more important that we have environmental options and areas within a crop that will give the insects for the partridge chicks and all the other arable birds that feed there. So involvement with the Sussex study started in 1968 with Dick Potts, uh, my uncle Christopher um, did it. Uh, he's still around now, he's 93, but uh, he's been involved in it ever since. So we, uh, we under sow spring barley, which is very beneficial to insects. I always remember Dick telling me it was one of the best things environmentally you could do with crops. Um, so basically we planted the barley, um, and then the grass is planted the same day and uh, it grows up, the barley acts as a nurse crop and the ground is undisturbed then through the following autumn um, when you get the emergence of a lot of, a lot of insects. The other thing, we don't spray any insecticides at all during the summer. We use them very rarely in the autumn for, against BYDV, but generally the beneficials uh, insects will be hidden away by then because it won't be till sort of November we do it. But we always trap before we do it um, so, I mean, the last couple of years we haven't sprayed at all. Basically, we don't use ivermectins. Um, we're very careful 
when we worm what we worm we, we fecal egg sample sheep before we worm the cattle don't get wormed we do sample them but generally they don't need doing um so it's it's yeah it's been a learning process the last couple of years as to what we've got but we haven't changed what we're doing it's been great it's, there's a lot of information comes out of it and at least still love going around with dick and with julie now you know we learn a lot as we go around and we always had a bit of banter with dick and julie getting land rover stuck and bits and pieces so it's it's been good fun Dick was just, yeah, it was always fun with Dick. He always used challenges. There was always questions when we were going around. What are you doing? Why are you doing it? What's going on? Uh, there's things he told me, you know, the first year I was here, I remember him telling me one year of insecticides in the summer, 10 years wipe out of, you know, before you before you got your beneficial predators back, it would take 10 years. So it was quite a sort of cutting point from me, yeah, definitely. People have told me that this paper represents to them what is so good about the GWCT. It's our long-term vision, and it's the idea that we're not there for three years. We're there for the long haul, and we're willing to work with farmers. And so, you know, in 100 years, after the next 50, it will be, hopefully, insects will have in, maybe increased a bit. It would be nice okay. if they were increased. Um, and, and But, you know, the next generation, we just met Hugh's daughter, when she's farming this ground, I hope she's uh, meeting up with somebody from the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust to do, um, you know, go out with them and do their insect sampling.